Not the day I've been waiting for, I've got to say. Charlie's here today and we are going to mark out this ceiling for all the spotlights and then drill them. It's going to go perfectly well. It's going to go what, Charles? It's going to go perfectly well, isn't it? It's going to go perfectly well, isn't it? But according to Charles, well, let's hope so. Forward, eh? There's a lot of holes. Well, I forgot to press uh, go on the old video, um, so you wouldn't have seen it. I thought it was on, but it wasn't on. Right, then all I've done is I've done... My plan is there. That's my plan. And all that's from brickwork. So all I've done is I know that when we put this wall on, I measured it at the bottom to keep the same reference, and it was 35mm from brickwork to face of new plasterboard. So I've measured 705 here to there, the laser. 705 that end. And then my laser goes, you won't, oh, you just about see it there, look. Laser goes up and up and over. I've marked the first one, um, and now I'm gonna drill it. So, Charl is gonna film me doing my first one. And hopefully, as Adam says, trust the plan, uh, we find the first light. Yeah. There we go, Charl, let's try that. We can make that work, don't worry. That's right, good. And that is, yeah, I'm happy with yeah, that as well. Yeah, lovely. Lovely, okay. comforting thing now is I know that all these are in line down this way so the same measurements will get me to the same place is the plan so I'm gonna do that now uh, I'm not gonna carry on filming but I'm gonna mark all these out now Charles gonna cut these while I go into there and do some more bonding and dabbing and what have you um, and then we'll come back and have a look at uh, all these sticking out the wall so, so there we are Always a good sight to see. All the cables sticking out the ceiling. That one's there, I just haven't pulled it out. It, it is in there, in fact, there it is. There it is. Uh, oh, yes, thank God for that. Oh, I can sleep tonight now.
Charlie's cracked on in here. He's got the sockets on. All the way around there. That one's left off because a little bit of a gap down the side of that socket there. So he's just going through now, socket, socket, setting all out for the socket's going to be there for the um, tall fridge freezer. I want to say on the time lapse, I've just boarded that and I boarded that. So at the end, when we've got the boards left over, I should use the offcuts to insulate and board from the other side as well. So it's tidy for that side until they have that room done. Um, and Casey's been in here and done that. It looks quite tidy. Put that in there ready for the boiler. So I'm happy with that. Um, so now my unfortunate job is bonding. Bonding, bonding, more bonding. Um, luckily this board is that thick, so I mean, maybe I could have come across here, but I wanted to use that now to bond off this surface, off this surface, so I can bond that in now. Uh, a bit tidy, that should be a lot easier. Um, and that is it. That won't be going up until the end, because I've got to cut all this out, so I'll have no light, so he's leaving that till the last minute for me. And then we'll, uh, we've got to disconnect, cut one of these wires out, and then the other one's got to go in the chop box and put in the ceiling, because it's part of the lighting circuit, so you in a chop box. Um, in the ceiling, because that should be fine. Uh, so yeah, little bit to bond, little bit to bond. Whew, yeah, here we go. So, it's not the time lapse because I'm bored, so you must be. And I speeded it up as much as I could. Charlie's done all these in here now, other than that one. And that's my fault because I forgot because I added this one. That's my fault. So, i got to get another one for there. Oh, hang on. Incoming phone call. End of the week. Got a lot to do today to get ready for the plaster. Or the final push, should we say. Which includes things like finishing the boxing off in the corridor. Other side of that wall. And we've got to dab around the reveals on the new back door. And then I've got to take the kitchen door off, dab around that. And if you remember from when I did the stairs in the first part, that is. And if you haven't seen that, that's in the, on the screen now. There's a wall to dab in to pull into the, what is the new corridor, if you like, to the downstairs toilet, utility and kitchen, which is that door there. Oh, get my finger right, that one there. That's got to come out. So uh, that's what I'm doing. Oh, and what I've had to do first job, tidy up after an electrician. Standard, isn't it? Standard, stuff everywhere. Right then, let's get on with it. That's out then. So there's nothing interesting about that. However, just a couple of points for you if you're taking this out yourself and um, you don't quite know what's the best way to do it. Now, all I have ever done, and I'll stand corrected and he tripped around my own rubbish then. I always cut my frames at an angle, cut it down at an angle. So when you're trying to lever the lever it off, it doesn't <coughs> it doesn't get stuck in itself. If you cut it square, if you try and lever it, it'll bind on itself. Cut it at an angle. I always go down and then pull the bottom out first. 
Now, what I will say is you would have seen me looking what, uh, behind the frame. The reason for that is we know that before it was stripped out, there were cables behind this architrave, which is a bit naughty. So imagine this architrave there, they put cables behind it to run them. They can't, you can't do that. And then you come to renovation things, you can cut straight through them. So what I would suggest is a reason why I've used a handsaw as well, rather than just going at it with a recip saw. Uh, so, yeah, cut it at an angle, and then I just leave it out and look behind it to make sure that these cables for this weren't here somewhere. That's why I did that. Likewise here, I just checked there wasn't any more cables. Um, so that's the reason for that. Also, before you take a door frame out, never presume... It's not been not supporting anything. Now I know there was a little bit of compo there, that's all. And I know that's a concrete lintel. So I was happy to take that down. I know this isn't gonna come down. But in older houses, they used to put quite a substantial frame in and then build off it for that little couple of coarser bricks. Um, now this is a bit different because these, that, sorry, is supporting the span of this. There's like a double wall there and it's the span. If it wasn't, if the joists were going this way, like I just said, it may be that up there is, is just four or five coarser bricks supported by the door frame. So be careful. Have a good look first. Again, we, we all, we've had all this out. I know what's going on up there. So I was happy just to strip this out and not have any problems like a full house brick on the top of my head. So there we are. I'll tidy this up now before Jen comes back. And um, I'll start prepping myself for plastering and bonding again. And oh, lovely. I've got blisters and everything. So rather than keep moving the bits of plasterboard about that I've got left over, I'll use them for this boxing. There's enough structure in there to uh, put pieces in. So that's what I'm gonna do. I just thought I'd show you something. It's like a little bit of scribing. And I know I don't need to do this because that's my face. But what I want to do is get a fixing in there on that timber. Because I've obviously structured this in now on top of my main timber that I'm going to fix to. So it's just a little, little not a tip. It's just how I work out where I'm going to put cut my, um, cut my scribes and things. So all you normally do, if you do that like that, and I know that I want this to finish against that wall. So that is 100 mil. So what you do then is if you mark all your points that it needs to go over the top of, like there, top of that, top of that, top of this, and the top then. And all you do then is making sure it's it's as sitting square and where you want it. And in this instance, if it was any like it was a panel, for example, in a kitchen, you'd make sure this was there was level as well and plumb, upright, square, whatever you want to do. Uh, whatever you want to call it, shall I say. And then you just measure off every point, 100 mil off the wall off there 100 mil, off there 100 mil, and then join it all in. And then what I would suggest you do is you scribble out which way you've got, to, you've got to cut out, because if you put your mark this side, I've done it myself, you cut this off and leave that in. I've done that before. So I always now scribble, I know what I've got to cut out. So I'll cut this out now and I'll show you what I mean, but yeah, just work it how far it's got to go in. And then, uh, yeah, measure off every point. 100 mil, the distance you need to go in. If that makes sense. Uh, hopefully it does. Right then, and that's it. It goes in nice then. I think I didn't, I did change, sorry, was I'd measured off here and then thought, oh, best check. That, obviously that line's in further. So all I did was I measured, same again, put the board in. Let me come back. Same again, I put the board in against my timbers that I wanted it to be. I measured off here instead, which is 135. So they went back and measured 135 and the brickwork up there. And that's what I did. And that's what you end up with. Um, and the board will go across there and the ceiling board will go into there. So, uh, yeah, if that's helped in any way, there you have it. If it hasn't, uh, sorry for boring the hell out of you. We are starting a new job on Wednesday. And if you look at the footage now, this is pretty much what we're doing. Bit of a sneaky preview for you, but for you, for you. Um, so what I'm going to do though, I didn't show you where I'd finished on Friday when I was on my own. So I'll quickly do that, and then it's left then ready for the plasters. Because if I'm honest, on Friday, I'd had enough. Right then, let's spin you around. This was all boxed in, all here. 
that's all boxed in there and then what i did was i put a little bit more bonding sorry for the light a bit more bonding on there just to pull that wall out because there's quite a belly in that wall so i did that i didn't want to do it in one go because it kept falling off because there was a lot did that took all this down um put the isolation and the chop box on the end of the cable uh, this was all bonded in here that is just going to come down and go under the cupboards in a loop sockets all bonded in all done and then the biggest job really was this now please plasters don't shoot me um but i try my best to bond this out um i formed a corner as best i can um it's not the the finest but i am a carpenter remember i am a carpenter so this was all dabbed all and uh, the pole was here but obviously customers take it out bonded in ready and and yeah oh, i thought that was all right it's all level it's all finished off it's all lovely got my little corner trail out and done that so anyway this is all bonded in that's all bonded in there that's all ended up being nice and solid i was pleased with that and it ended up as i planned in the episode that i referenced you to earlier it all sat on the timbers and all screwed in as well oh i forgot that though right the plaster's not coming today uh he's cried off don't know what's happened but he uh, can't come today so i'll tell you what i'm gonna leave that for him just to help me out Set out on the open road Same old place you always used to go When you were younger I'm speeding through a 50 song Like your dad before You didn't even notice The old man with silver hair Sitting in his rocking chair Soon you'll be there. Okay, so I've got, so far, I've got about a 400mm deep hole there now. I've got another 100mm, and then I'm hoping then to get in there. There's already lintels down there that we put in. I've just got to break a brick at this side, and there's lintels the other side. And then the connection is, uh, I'm saying it's just there, but I'm going to have to get on my belly, I reckon, and, and get in there, which would be lovely for me, wouldn't it? So, I've stopped doing that for now. Charlie's been putting sockets on the walls, getting these wired ready. And what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to mark the horrible job of marking the ceiling where the spotlights are. Now, I have done my plan in my book. Here it is. There's the kitchen. There's the uh, side of the house and there's the toilet. And uh, yeah, so we're going to hope then that that's, there's the kitchen lights there. And hope that... Um, that all works out. So let's give it a go. Soon you'll be there. Although it's easy to remember, it's as easy to forget. But it leaves you feeling down and filled with some regrets. All this trick of the memory, we'll call them good old days. All the sweet in the moment is poison for you. 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 So they're all marked out now. All the costs on the ceiling. And we there was one here, but we didn't put that one in the end because because of the, um, this being here. Um, but now I look at it, I'm wondering, Char, do we put it back in? Anyway, um, so there's a fridge freezer going there in that point, so it might be a bit too much. Anyway, so what he's doing now is, look, he's getting a screwdriver and he's poking a hole right where the cross is. And all that does for them is, is when he starts to put this on, it means the drill bit in the middle of there finds that hole and doesn't wander anywhere and end up drilling the wrong place. Because that's always a worry if we do that. Um, so he's doing that now and I've just talked to a couple of things with regards to setting out. Now, if you're doing a first fix 
Um, and I, I was talking to Charlie about it because I was saying about it, he doesn't do much on sites. And I was just saying the fact that, unfortunately, some trades don't care about the ones before or the ones after. So if he was doing his first fix now on site, he was marking these out and putting it in his book. What I was saying to him is if this is going to be dabbed, if you set your lights up like I've done, but measure off the floor, off your block work when you do your first fix and use your laser, if you draw your holes in your floor joists, or unless they're metal web, then, you know, it's a different story, but you put clips on. But uh, if you draw your hole in your, your joists, feed them through, or put your clips on your metal web or your, your eye joists or whatever you've got doing on site, and make sure they're in line when you set them out at first fix. Then when you come to this stage, if this has been dabbed, all you can do then is, because it's going to have skirting board on it, you can put a little tiny notch in the bottom of the, the plasterboard there and go back to the block work where you originally measured and put your mark on your floor to step for your first fix. So when you then use your laser to come back up and do what we're doing now, we know then there isn't an issue with um, where your, your cables are going to be. Because like I said to Charles, unfortunately, plasterboarders might come in after and if you've left your cables done, then I'll just chuck them up or I've seen some of them cut them off because there's too much cable. Unbelievably, I know, but they do it. That's what happens on site. So that's just a little bit of a tip. I'll just mention to Tar, really, uh, whether he finds that interest or not, I don't know, but he said he does, but I think he's just uh, playing lip service him at the minute. So that's where we are then. We're gonna uh, drill these out now, and hopefully, after all this gobbing off from me, we're gonna find the cables. So let's have a look. Right, we'll just have this slight discussion. I think I've cocked up a little bit with the decision I've made with regards to the spotlight that I took out there. When I envisioned this boxing, I got it in my head as it being over here somewhere. But now we've set it out from the kitchen and worked back. It, it actually look okay, because it's going to be about here. And like Charlie's pointed out, it's no closer to the wall than this one is. Because we wanted these in line over there. In fact, it's further away. So luckily, all I did was pull the cable back to here, to this one. And the joist is already drilled out anyway. So we should be able to fish through it. So I'm going to take a chance, take a risk and drill a hole where there wasn't one originally and then push the wire back through. So we, you may or may not see that because I may be doing some swearing. Should we have a look at that, John? Let's have a go. Let's have a go. Should be fine because uh, the joist was drilled at seven hundred. I remember. It was, we did, drilled at seven, like I just said, I'm setting out your joist because we drilled it at 700. I know my cables at 700 and the hole is in line. I haven't drilled it over here and I've got to try and fish through a hole over there. I know these are all in line for this reason, just in case, you never know. Right, let's have a look. So, uh, as you can see, there, that hole, is a result of my cock up. Not the best, but there we are. I cocked up, I didn't think we needed the light there, and we do. So we're doing the last one now. We've been lucky to find all the cables. And we should find the cables over there as well. Should should we, Charles? You should. Are they there? Yes, they are, yeah. There they are. And that's just, uh, yeah, really, really upsetting. But we've got the disc, we'll put the disc back in um, and we'll find some of this filly and that'll be uh, lovely jubbly. But it's just something we don't like to do because it's a finished plaster. But there we are. So you're going to fish that cable out there now and then I'll put in a bit of a time lapse and you can watch him fit the, uh, oh, watch him fit the, uh, fit the spotlights. Right then. Right then, you'd have seen from the footage that the spots are in. You would have also seen my little cock up. There we are, we all have them, and we like to show them on the channel, don't we? You know we do. Uh, and that was just because I decided that wasn't gonna be there, and then when we started to set them out, I thought, you know what, it needs to be there, so we put it back. This cable, we'll just pull back 
to there. So we just fished it back again. Then we use that in between the two joists, one there, one there, to fish between the two. I'm glad we've done it. Pain in the arse, but I'm glad we've done it. Charlie is now in there, in the board. That's the best side of Charlie. There it is, look. Yeah. Pants out and everything. Calvin Klein. Oh, God, you're posh. Um, so he's in there now doing his business in the board there. Um, just to get all these lights on for us today. That'd be nice. And the toilet as well. Gonna get these, this light on and the fan on in here set up. The fan is up there as well. There it is. Control over there by a switch on and off. Um, that hasn't got a stop on like the toilet has. So that'll be controlled when the dryer's on, washer's on. To get rid of the moisture out of there. And while Charlie's doing that, I have done this. So if I get right down here, so you can see the connection it's under there, look. There it is. It was right there under the lintel. So I've used a series of uh, slow bends there now, 15s and 30s, to get me to this point in the centre. Nice slow bend all the way down. So we'll um, have a look at the structure here now. So we'll sort that out. Come back a little bit. Sort the structure here now as well. Put some structure back in there where the bricks are, because we can see that. Because this can, now I've got this set, I can mark my pipes and I can take this out and we can do what we've got to do and then put it back in. Now I know I'm, I'm exactly where I need to be. That's at floor level. So I'll put the uh, the cap back in there to stop the smells and any, any crap getting in there. Not, uh, you know about the crap, don't you? I mean, bricks, oh, forget it, don't I? Um, and then we'll uh, pea gravel under there to support the pipe. Um, and then we'll just start to backfill, tamp it all in, backfill. Put some, when we put some backfill in here, I'll then put some gravel under here, underneath the pipe. And then as we as we build it up, I'll put some pea gravels over the top, and we'll just keep working ourselves up and building it, tamping it with the old little elephant's foot, tamping it in, and then build ourselves up to concrete level. That's ended up a nice, quite nice, neat line there where the uh, the tiles were. So we can make good to that now. But at least I can start putting some stuff back in here, and. Uh, Get some support with this pipe. Like I say, it's pea gravel and things, and we can get that done. Right then, hopefully, give it half an hour, I'll have some lights on in there, and a light in here. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Okay, trusted the plan again. Uh, yeah, when you don't make mistakes. So these are all in. That was the tight one, because it had to drop in, if you remember. You may or may not remember. There were two timbers quite close together and I had to try and get that in the centre. That worked out well. So uh, these have all worked out lovely. And that one up there, if you don't know what it is, is the um, carbon monoxide detector, because we've got that in here. And what we did off camera, Charlie's had these lights on, but he's turned them off just to do the other lights. We've cut these out. These have all worked out. We found these lovely. So they work out. We found these lovely. Is that light still on, Charles? It's not. I've got no sorry, no sorry. We'll do we'll do a big reveal at the end, Charles. Like um, got the fan sorted. I've cut that out for him ready. Um, he's just doing the um, switch, which is the. This Bath the bathroom, bathroom yes. and fan isolation is that? What's that for? Fan isolation isn't there, but that is for the fan there, the second switches. And what's the other one for? Just the spotlight. Oh yes, spotlight yes. Fan. Isolation and and switch for the fan as well as. Um, so there we are. It's all looking lovely. He's got that switch on there temporary, just to because it's linked with the hallway. These are these two here sticking out. They're not attached to anything yet because they're just the. Um, three corn earth for the kitchen to put the kitchen on from here and also in the lounge. That's what they're for. Um, so there we are, then it's all looking a big bag of lovely. So um, we'll finish the day now getting these sorted out, getting the lights on. I shall wait till tomorrow now to get the pea gravel in there and do the concreting. And I'll have a bit of a tide up now, I think. And the, in a minute, I'll show you with all the lights on. Looking forward to it. End of the day then. Holes all dug out, you've already seen. And that's ready for concrete tomorrow. We have lights all connected in the hallway. In there now. 
these aren't like these are just feeds i've already said these go to these cables over there and they're not connected to anything yet so we've just done that for there because behind the socket is live likewise with these these aren't connected um, but one of those is to allow for these lights to go on and off my good my little bit of a faux pas there uh, these are ready to go and those two cables in that switch are the two here the one that's um, a little bit live just on a bit of way goes and then taped up there the, none of these are live so that's all good to go there so yes the uh, next time that you come back this will be all done complete um sockets will be on these lights will be on car monoxide will be detect the uh, car monoxide detector will be on and little things like that fan go to that fan in there and that's it but this light works as well look at that wonderful and charlie's in there just putting the uh the face on the board and that's it done it with charl happy happy he's happy there we are then it was a good day mate to be fair um, so there we are then, just a bit of a tidy up. So uh, that's it, we'll see you in the morning. Back on site this morning, and uh, as you can see in the uh, background there, Michael is back today. Uh, I've dug the hole now, so he said I'll come back now, because he didn't want to get on his belly under the floor like I did. Uh, so he's come back today. So it's what I'm gonna do- to get on now, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> so well, I'll get you one of them things that the we weebles that might, no, that's a bit nasty, isn't it? No weebles that might fall down. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, I'm gonna turn you around now and show you what we're doing today. In fact, that we've always started, already started doing. So what we're doing is, I broke the bricks out of this, like I, like I did with that one. Um, and the same as that one was, there's a, obviously the existing concrete slab. I'm not gonna start breaking that out and risking any integrity of that floor, because I don't see the point. Um, so what we'll do is, uh, we'll do exactly the same as we did over there, if you remember seeing that footage. And I'll, I'll put some blind, sand blinding in there. And we're gonna get some insulation in there now. And then we'll uh, put some, uh, sorry, DPM on top of there now. Then some insulation in there, just to give a bit of a, well, is, is there any real need? But anyway, don't matter. There's, there's no real need because there's none in this, but we don't think that's the point, or I don't anyway. So I'm gonna put some in there, and then we're gonna, uh, because this is only about 60 mil or so, that bit there, we've got some pea gravel. So we're gonna make up some um, pea gravel concrete and fill that and float all this in just to get the levels. Uh, same as you did over there. Oh, hang on. Talk about a special guest. Hello. Yeah, look. Hello. I know we're doing it to his, his channel. He's um, special guest in us today, look. And he's bought McDonald's coffees. <laughs> right then, so we'll get this carried on. We'll get this prepped. And then we'll do in the toilet. We're just getting the DPM sorted now. I've already showed you this, but we'll we'll get this done. It has just bought the pea gravel. So we'll get this filled up with pea gravel. And then we're going to decide about putting structure in. But at the minute, we think the best option is to pea gravel and, and backfill up to the lintel, which you can see there, the bit of grey right in the centre of the screen now, that's the lintel. So we're going to fill up to that point. And then what we'll do is we'll come past that lintel so no, nothing can flow under the floor. Then I'm going to get some insulation, just put it in the cavities either side to stop any flow of concrete. And then we're going to fill of concrete up underneath all of this, right underneath it, so it touches it all. So it touches the brickwork. So we haven't got to try and put lintels in there. We reckon that's the best option. And because of all this as well, it's been undermined when I brought the concrete off. It wasn't the best concrete. I'm literally pulling it out of my hands. So that's what we think we're going to do. So whether we film it or not, I don't know, because it's quite tight and there's a little bit of us today. So, <coughs> oh, excuse me. It may be that we just do finished product at the end instead. <coughs> I'm going to go and choke now and drink my coffee. Right then. Now we've finished our coffees and had a chat and put the worlds to rights. Uh, what we've done now is empty some pea gravel into there now, flowed it underneath the pipe and all the way around it at the bottom there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put some of the, um, the backfill that was in here back in with some of the big stones taken out and then tamp that down. We've got a little, um, little tamper that we can tamp that down with nice and solid. And what that will do then is, is that will block off, you can sort of see there's a bit of a gap there now. That'll block, that's about 30 mil or so. But of course there's a void under that floor. So if I keep pouring stuff in this period, it just keep flowing under the floor. So I'll knock some hardcore in there now. And then um, we'll start tamping some uh, of this 
backfill back in. And then we'll, what I want to do then is, like I've just said, is get some um, bit of insulation, even though, as Mick's pointed out, and rightly so, there's really no need because none of this is insulated. None of it. There's no DPM, there's no insulation, but we are putting some back in. Just, put, I don't know, just, should we call it peace of mind, Mick, or what? Do you... Sound of peace, more mind up. <laughs> We're just going to do it anyway. Um, because we are. I mean, of course, yes, the ideal would have been get all this floor, get all that floor up, and but that customer didn't want it. It's that simple. Um, we didn't want all this floor up, and, and you know, that's just the way it is. So, um, when there's no need, there's no damp issues with the floor. It's just, we'll, so we'll put some DPM back in um, and a bit of insulation, and then we'll concrete it and we'll flow it underneath here, underneath there, to put some structure back in. And then it'll flow all the way through and up to up to this point. And then when this is all latexed in to put the flooring down, that'll all be all be lovely. Right then, let's do that. So we put some hardcore in. As you can see, um, I've come up to the above the level of the lintel that I showed you in the footage just. Um, we've then wrapped this vertical pipe and the couplers in a bit of insulation, a bit of soft insulation, some DPM, just to um, shield that from the concrete when we put it in. Um, but as I've already said, we've already pea graveled as much as we can. And of course, you can't pea gravel a vertical pipe, so we've wrapped it. Rightly or wrongly, we think it's the right thing to do. So we've done that. Uh, then I've got some sand, put some, got the old bucket of sand and blinded the, uh, the hardcore that, or, that we put in. Uh, and we've had a bit of a rethink on the old insulation and what have you. I'm more concerned about structure than I am of insulation. And the reason being is, there isn't any in this. So what, what's the real point in insulating under the toilet? There's no real need. So what we are going to do is I'm going to put a, put a piece of DPM on there now on the sand. So it sort of lips up the dirt. So it goes, as you can see there underneath the concrete. So I'll get it into there and the same that side. And then what I'll do then is we'll concrete. So it flows under there, goes under there and supports all of this. And we'll fill this up with concrete now. And there is about probably say about eight, eight or nine inches, uh, 200 mil, 225 mil of um, concrete there. And we'll fill it up with concrete just to make sure all this is all, bind, all bound in again, all bonded in again. That's what we'll do. Um, and I think that's the, the best route to go down. Don't you, Mick? Okay. There we go then. That's what we think and we're happy to accept your comments on that one. But it just seemed a bit... I'm sure there'll be some. But it just seemed a bit silly to, to insulate and DPM it when there's nothing in the floor because it could just wick up the side of it anyway into this part, so it just seems silly. Yeah, so there we the are. But, um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that now. So we are, end of the day. That's all concreted. Uh, and we didn't show any because it's concrete, isn't it? That's all done. Put all the DPM all the way around. It's filled it full of concrete. Where does it go? This is getting sanded tomorrow. I'm not going to go into the technical reasons why, but it's something to do with the type of screed it is. It films, it films on the top and the latex can't stick to it, so it has to be sanded first. Don't know why. Floor layers out there. Tell me the reason why. I was told, but I forgot. But something to do with the type of um, screed this is. That's why it needs sanding before it can be latexed. So this is concreted as well. So, as I showed you, we put the DPM underneath the concrete, all the way in. DPM and um, insulation around there, so we can get the, at least now we can get the pan connector in. Because that'll just be cut, we can pull that cap off and get it in. Yeah, and then we're going to get one of those pan connectors that you can get the inch and a quarter waste into it for the basin. So, that's it. So, we're all prepped. Um, plaster's coming tomorrow, just to do a couple of things for us. There's, the beads, beads crack there, and there's a couple of items that he's going to make good for us. So um, we're going to leave this now. This is just stuff in here that we got from under our tarp. We've had a good tidy up in the garden, and there's a skip coming tomorrow. So that would be nice to get a good tidy up, and we'll start working our way out. Right then, see you in the morning. Uh, right, good morning, early start today. Uh, we've had Martin here, the underfloor heating engineer, to come and sand the floor off. I forgot to ask him the reason behind it, but I'm pretty sure it's something to do with the finish on the underfloor heating screed, latex won't stick to it. I've got to apologise to him, because he said, why aren't you filming? And I didn't think about it till he finished. So uh, I'm going to spin you around now and show you what we've sort of ended up with. 
but all it is is the same as when it was just finished other than it's not glossy anymore so we've carried on the theme of tidy up not a very exciting video i know but it's progress isn't it and that's all i can do for it at the minute <laughs> we are next episode we will be doing things like doors and kitchens and things i promise you stay with us it'll get exciting so um all we've done is we've just got all the all the stuff together that we want to keep if you like and take with us which is there all this here now is rubbish that's rubbish in there we've just took the garage down and if you remember the uh, what this used to sort of look like if i could find a photo i'll stick it in the uh the video now if i can't then uh yeah you won't see uh but if you've been following us since the start of this then you would have seen this anyway so um so we've got a full view now all the rubbish all the rubbish or all, all just skips just just a second turned up um i said i am it is now half past one half one there we are it's a good i am that isn't it it's an i am somewhere isn't it an i am somewhere so uh, we've now got the beautiful job now, at least the rain stopped, the pair of us are soaked to the pants trying to get all this down, all the roof off. Getting this in the skip, isn't that exciting for you? I'm sure you'll love to watch that, so I'm not going to film it. Is time? Yeah, we'll just uh, get it in the skip and hopefully you'll see some progress next or doing us something nice, who knows? Like getting clean? Like having a good wash, maybe. Yeah. So we'll leave that episode there, shall we? I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that like button if you have. We'd appreciate it. I'm now off to uh, have a dusted out Adams. And he's actually in there. There he is, look. So I'm here, armed and dangerous, with my kettle, a pair of gloves and a mask. And uh, there we are. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>